Welcome to this segment where we honor the diversity of people in our community, people like us. In 2003, Roberto Hernandez spoke out powerfully as a survivor of hate violence at Community United Against Violence annual press conference on hate violence. Fifteen years ago, Hernandez left Mexico to escape anti-gay discrimination and police abuse. He's starting a new life in this country with no money, friends, or close relatives to depend upon. He worked in many different occupations, from cutting tomatoes to washing dishes to waiting tables. In 2000, Hernandez got his first opportunity to work professionally as an account executive for Spanish radio stations here in the United States. In 2001, he realized his American dream by becoming part of the Hispanic Broadcasting Corporation as an account executive. On October 18th, 2002, Hernandez became a survivor of hate violence and sexual harassment on a major Spanish-speaking radio program, Raul Brines y Pipito. Roberto, thank you for joining us on Outlook Video. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here, and it's really an honor to tell you your story of how you came to the United States. It's not much too different than other immigrants. However, there's a twist to your story. You had some success, and then you had this cruel violence held tapped against you. Please tell our audience how this happened. Well, it's, um, I guess it's one of the difficult times of my life. I guess it's a very, um, what I called before, it's a tragedy. But um, after I came here, running away from discrimination and, and homophobia in my home, in my home, in my country, and my work, so I decided to start a new life, came to the United States looking for comfort as a human being. Sure. So looking to be me and be proud of who I am and not to be living behind bars basically to hide it from everybody. So what I said and what you said before, my American dream became when I started working for this amazing huge corporation in the United States as an account executive. Obviously after cutting tomatoes and washing <laughs> dishes, that was the amazing thing in life. I can tell you right now, I can be no time in life that I'd be so proud of myself that I was that time that I was hired for this company. Well, it sounds so, like you had every right to be as well from going through all those changes. Well, it's, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a hard work, mm -hmm. a hard work to do. Um, so when I, when I, um, so a few, few years later, so a year and a half later, I'm being victimized for this Mm. And this American dream just had just became dashed all in one day. All in one day, I believe, I feel in those days like uh, the hard work for almost 15 years of my life is taken away. Now, how did this happen? You were on your way to work and you suddenly got this contact? Actually, I was on my way to, to work. It was in the morning, uh, Friday morning, I was driving down to my office when my cell phone rang and it was just this feminine voice the other side of the line that I uh, pretend that I was meet, uh, we met in a, in a gay bar in the Bay Area in mm. San Francisco. And he basically, he asked me out on a, on a date. Mm. So, well, that in itself is not unusual, but he did, he did get more private than that. Well, sounds like a wow. What amazing thing, how, how, how hot I am that I got this guy. He has hats for me and they want me, <laughs> they want me to take out. So, but as soon the conversation went far, so um, I started really, really scarce. He had uh, so much information about me, mentioning my full name, got in my, my cell phone number, he has um, where I work. The, he knows people that I, that I work in those days, so obviously mm -hmm. at that point I was more worried about my, my security than being sure. waiting for somebody call me on the phone. But then it became evident that this was a prank. Well, at the end of the conversation when he asked me to, to, to take um, his phone number, he said, uh, said listen, I, I don't recognize this these numbers, where are you calling from? He said, I'm calling you from the El Show de Raul Brindis y Pepito. Says, Somebody told me they bother you. I oh, said, excuse me, that was totally like, uh, like somebody hit me in my head. I said, somebody so, told you bother me. So, so you went on after this incident and it, it uh, obviously affecting you, your, your emotionally and your mental health, you, you, you still got enough strength to do something about it. Um, tell us quickly what is what you did. Well, what it. happened was this. So after this guy told me that it was just being a, a joke, somebody told him bother me. So I came to my supervisors and I 
and I, I make them very clear that I was not happy with this incident. So, and I, I demanding they got this, do something about it. So obviously the whole company, the whole corporation ignore the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They want to put it under the rug. So that are not, not, not only that. So three months later, they tried to fire me. They tried to find me. They tried just to say that I wasn't not a good worker for the company. So when before there was the more enthusiastic and the more mm -hmm. um, out, I guess a very outgoing person in my and company. And this prompted the a lawsuit. Yes, it went to a lawsuit. Of, who took me two years and a half of my life. My goodness. So yeah. that was, like I said, the biggest, biggest. The, adventure in my life. Well, the somewhat good news of it is that you did reach a settlement, and now you've started uh, something of your own. Please well, tell our, our, our audience This is the that. dream that I came after all the incident in my life. So um, one of the biggest things that I'm really finding right now, I'm trying to educate the community about mm -hmm. how homophobia can be destroying, how homophobia can be so bad, and how homophobia taken away from your loved ones. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now, educate my community. And someday my dream is not only my community, every community. That's so fantastic. It's hopefully that's happened. That's fantastic. We'd love to see you get back onto your American dream track. And for our visitors, please uh, take a look at your screen right now, and you can find uh, where you can get more information. Um, about your group, which is about your company, which is called Gluch. Gluch. Les Gay y Lesbianas Unidos contra la Homofobia. Excellent. Please check that out. Get some more information. Guard yourself against something like this happening in the future. Roberto, we wish you all the very best in your endeavors. We're glad to know that you're that you've now become a strong person and are doing your best to fight homophobia. Thank you so much for thank this you, time. Thank you. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Back to the show.